In this video, we're going to use EasyMorph to build out a complete end-to-end -end reporting process. This workflow will read in a data file, process the data, and write out one or more PDF report files based on an Excel template. Since the report will drive what data we'll need and what it needs to look like, let's look at that first. The report is displaying students' class grades as both a combined average on the left and broken out on the right. As we'll have classes of varying sizes, we're using pivot tables for the data table and pivot charts based on the pivot tables so they can resize properly. Each report is based on the class of a single teacher shown at the top. The data is stored in separate tabs in formatted Excel tables so they can expand and contract based on the class size. Let's take a look at the workflow. We start out by reading in the data file of the student's grades by class and teacher. The values are already aggregated, so no calculations are needed here. We will derive the table to create a list of unique teacher names so we can run the reports by teacher. We'll remove all columns but the teacher column and deduplicate to get a unique list. I've added an optional filter here so we can process all teachers or selected ones. This is disabled when the full run is processed. Finally, we iterate through the list of teachers. So each teacher in the teacher list is passed into the reports module along with the full source data set. Within the module, the data set is filtered for just that teacher's class. Now, within the reports module, we'll see the core of the process. The data set is received by the input action. If this isn't populated when you select it, click Populate Automatically to retrieve the data from the source table. You can then step through the workflow using the populated tables. Next, we apply a filter to keep just the current teacher's class data. Now, since we need the data in two formats, we'll derive two tables here. The top branch will create the data set for the student grid chart, showing the scores by class for each student. As the source data is in whole numbers and we're displaying percentages, we'll need to convert them to decimals. Now, we'll pivot the table into a wide format to get the cross tab we need, rearrange the columns into the desired order, and write the data out to the table in the chosen Excel sheet. The bottom branch will calculate an average of the class scores per student using the aggregate action. We'll create a decimal value from the result and round off to two decimal places. We sort by the average score to list the higher achievers at the top, and then rearrange the columns into the desired order. Since we have two different branches writing to the same file, I've inserted a synchronize action so this branch waits until the top branch has completed before inserting its data. To force the pivot tables and charts to pick up the new data, we run an Excel command in recalculate workbook mode on the file. We now generate the unique file name for the report by combining some static text with the teacher's name parameter and append the .pdf suffix. Be careful not to use forbidden file name characters in your expression. Finally, we'll run another Excel command action in save as PDF mode, using the calculated file name to generate the PDF report file, targeting all pages on only the reports tab. And that process creates a single teacher report. This module will run for each teacher passed in from the iterate action in the main module to produce a report per teacher. So that is the workflow and the Excel report template in detail. Let's return to the main module and set the workflow to produce two reports, one for Mr. Hayworth and one for Mrs. West. These teachers will be a good test for the workflow as their class sizes are different. One has three students, one has five. So we'll see how the tables and charts adapt to the dynamic number of students. Let's run the workflow and see our reports. The workflow is done. Let's take a look at our report files. First is Mr. Hayworth's report. He had three students with the tables and charts adjusting to that number. Mrs. West's report is next, and you'll see how the charts and tables change to display the data for all five students in her class. 
So, as you can see, it is not difficult to build an easy morph workflow to generate single or batch PDF reports without a line of code. If you're reading in raw data that requires cleaning or calculations before generating the reports, derive another table from the source data, run those steps, and then iterate using the transform data set and the teachers list. Now for some tips for setting up your pivot tables in the report template. After creating your pivot tables, format and place them where you want them. Open the pivot table options and on the first tab, layout and format, make sure preserve cell formatting on update is checked on and auto fit column widths on update is unchecked or the table columns will auto shrink or expand based on the data within them. Thank you for watching.